Hello, and welcome to the Elephant Tales podcast, where we'll be diving into stories by kids for kids. Each year, our authors have showcased their limitless creativity, having their characters traverse through countless scenarios, from mythical lands to the comical realities of daily life. Keep listening to hear these amazing stories. We hope you enjoy them. Unfortunately, many objects from our lives on the land end up in the sea, polluting the water and beaches. However, consider what it might be like to be a squid who comes across a piece of string or a turtle who stumbles upon a pack of tissues at the bottom of the ocean. To us, these items may be trash, but to these creatures, they're treasures. Inspired by classic underwater tales like Finding Nemo, this young author developed a character to go on a search for treasure. Adventures under the sea are filled with excitement and fun, but also frustration and disappointment. Even in the face of challenges like getting lost in a dark zone, this little sea creature never gives up. Go fish! This is Eleanor. She is a color-changing jellyfish. She changes with her feelings. When she is happy, she is pink. But when she is sad, she is black. She is big and fat. She loves to play tag. She eats tuna fish. She lives in some seaweed. One day, Eleanor and Rosa were playing tag at the coral reef. Rosa is an otter. She is Eleanor's friend. First, they saw some red coral and hundreds of fish. Next, they heard some sounds like flipping fins. The fish were making the sounds. The water was warm and they tasted some fish. At last, they smelled brine. Eleanor was in the brain coral. She was stuck in it. She found a lid. The lid was in the coral. It was there because it was small enough to fall in it. It was green. It was big too. She picked it up and wore it like a hat. She was very happy. So, she was pink. The coral was pink too. Eleanor went to find Rosa. She was waiting at the rocks to eat lunch. Rosa was happy too. Rosa said, Your hat, it's cool. Thank you, said Eleanor. Eleanor was happy. She laughed. You can wear it, said Eleanor. Then, Rosa took the hat and wore it. Thank you, said Rosa. She felt happy, but the hat was too small for Rosa. Eleanor swam around. It's cool, said Rosa, but when she gave it back to Eleanor, Rosa looked very sad. Her mouth went down and she looked down. I can find another treasure for you, said Eleanor. Oh, thank you, said Rosa. She felt very excited. Then they decided to go to find a treasure for Rosa. They brought a toothbrush on the trip. They also brought food and drinks. Eleanor told her mum that she needed to go on a trip. Her parents gave her a bracelet. The bracelet was made of plastic. It was strong. She put all her things in a backpack. Eleanor and Rosa bumped into Miss Ham. She was a fish who looked like a ham. She was Eleanor's neighbour. We want to find treasure, said Eleanor and Rosa. Miss Ham said, I can help you to find a treasure. Eleanor and Rosa felt so excited. First, find some spotty seaweed. Next, go to the cave, open the door to cross Shark Road, and then find a rainbow shell. Finally, you will be at the old and broken computer. Last, dig to get the treasure. It's under the computer, said Miss Ham. Rosa and Eleanor set off to find the treasure. First, Rosa and Eleanor found some spotty seaweed, and then they saw a cave. Then Eleanor and Rosa went to the cave. Eleanor and Rosa got trapped because they got lost. They were sad. Eleanor turned blue. They used the bracelet to dig under the rocks. Then they got to the door. The door opened and they went out. 
they were happy, and Eleanor turned red. They found a rainbow shell. Inside the shell there was a seahorse. Trencheska was the name of the seahorse. She made a yummy snack for Rosa and Eleanor. Trencheska made seaweed ice cream. Eleanor and Rosa said, thank you. At last they went to the computer and dug up the treasure. They dug it up and they saw a can of meat. It was round and hard. There was a picture of ham on it. Oh, it's gross, thought Eleanor. Eleanor's mouth wiggled. Her eyebrows went down. She turned green. <laughs> it's funny, thought Rosa, but it's spoiled. She threw it away. Let's go and find another treasure, said Rosa. They were swimming through the open ocean. It was beautiful. There were lots of fish. It was very deep. The water was green. Then they went to the underwater ruins. There were some officers there and there were cars. There were only skinny bumfish living there. They looked like bums and they were squishy. Some of them were wearing glasses. Eleanor and Rosa started laughing. They went to a sandy area. There was lots of pink sand. They saw a seahorse and they played with him. They were very happy. Then they went to the dark zone. They were there because they saw a beautiful fish. The fish swam too fast and Eleanor and Rosa lost it. They saw nothing. It was dark and scary. Next, they heard a bumping sound and then they touched another fish. It was slimy and cold and they were scared and worried. They smelt salt. They got hurt by some big rocks they could not see, so they did not know that the rocks were there. They cut their bodies, so they were both hurt and bleeding. When Eleanor felt hurt, she turned orange. Rosa said, ouch! A light fish passed by and lit the road. There was a light on its head. The fish said, follow me, I will bring you back to my place. Together, they went to the light fish's home. The light fish found some seaweed and made it into bandages. Rosa and Eleanor were all better now because they had bandages. They thanked the light fish. Eleanor said, bye bye. Rosa said, see you next time. The light fish said, no problem. They passed by the seaweed forest. There was lots of rainbow seaweed, but then Eleanor met a fish and got distracted. So she went another way and was separated from Rosa. Rosa shouted, Eleanor, Eleanor! But Eleanor was too far away and her voice was too little. Suddenly, Eleanor stopped and waited for Rosa. She thought Rosa was behind her. When she saw Rosa was gone, she was miserable. She turned dark blue. Her mouth was a circle and her tentacles wiggled. Then Eleanor found a lettuce fish and called Missy Amanda. She was fat and like a lettuce. They made a map together and drew a little jellyfish where Eleanor was. Missy Amanda brought the seaweed map to Rosa so that Rosa could see where Eleanor was. When Rosa looked at the map, Rosa said, Oh, it is Eleanor. She swam to Eleanor and they were happy. Eleanor turned pink and Rosa laughed. They arrived at a shipwreck. It was gold and silver and a half pentagon shape. It had a hole. The sides were sharp. There was seaweed around the ship. Then they went in and saw some starfish. They were talking together. Rosa and Eleanor found a toilet seat, but the hole was too big. Then they found a pencil, but it was too sharp. And finally they saw a plastic bag, but it was no use to Rosa. At the end of the ship, they found the treasure. It was a sharp fork next to some oysters. Rosa grabbed the fork and opened the oyster. She and Eleanor felt happy. They sang a song together. While they were swimming back home, they saw a bumfish at the Sandy's place. The bumfish said, Hello, I'm Bum. Bum allowed them to sit on him and take a ride. Eleanor and Rosa laughed and giggled. Next, they found a breadfish beside the old computer. I am called Breddy. 
He gave them some bread. Eleanor and Rosa ate it and said, Yum! Then they got caught by a man at the cave. The man used a trap and a net. Eleanor and Rosa were scared. Eleanor turned purple. Rosa used her fork to poke the man. He screamed, but he drank water in, so he went up to breathe air. He shouted as loud as he could until his voice was gone. While he was screaming, Eleanor and Rosa swam away. At last, they went back to the seaweed. They both said, Wow, it grew so fast. When Eleanor went home to her baby brothers and sisters, they had a big hug. Her siblings kissed her. I missed you, said Eleanor. She kissed her family and told them about the trip. That is cool, said the brothers and sisters. They all wanted their own treasures. They asked Eleanor to give them some too, and they all shouted, I want to go! I want to go! Eleanor said, OK. So she made plans to go again. But next time, I will go to another place, thought Eleanor. Now, let's hear from Flora's teacher, Miss Amanda, five years later. All right. Hi, we're here with Miss Amanda. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Miss Amanda. I've been working at ECP since 2015. So I've seen a lot of workshops and taught a lot of them. So thanks for having me. Of course. So what is your favorite part of working with young writers? Definitely one of the best parts is to hear their zany ideas because I teach creative writing because I like stories a lot and I like to hear different stories. And a lot of the time, basically 100% of the time even, I would say that students always come up with stuff that I would never expect. Funny characters or settings, really cool concepts and worlds, or even reactions to the situations we ask them to put the characters in. I really enjoy then helping them articulate these clearly and it's really fun also to see their reactions when they find out how their readers respond to their stories. Um, the way that we laugh about them or gasp in shock and even ask more questions about the next part so they can continue giving me a lot of zany ideas. And it's really fun to read. Right, right. Working with young authors can be really rewarding. So what advice would you give these young writers that are just starting out? I get asked this a lot too, actually, because we have so many different types of workshops with different topics and themes. And some students pick them because they really like the topic or theme. Some of them will come in and kind of say, oh, I've never thought about this before. So it kind of goes to show that uh, we should be interested in a lot of different things. Reading, of course, is the kind of stepping stone to writing. So I really encourage everyone to read as many different types of books as you can. And all subjects are actually connected to each other. Uh, it will help you as an overall learner. If you read a lot of nonfiction books, you're going to have a wide general knowledge. You'll learn uh, about so many different subjects like animals or places. And it, that will help you know how to write something realistically. But on the other hand, fantasy and speculative fiction encourages you to open your mind. You'll be really creative. You can decide what you want to change and make up. If you read many different authors, especially authors who come from different places, whether they're from um, American or British or South African and Japanese or whatever, you'll expand your vocabulary. You'll learn about different ways of saying things. Then you can really nail your description. Comedy and even visual books like graphic novels are still really useful. They'll help you so much with your dialogue and pacing. So every kind of book is something to learn from. I encourage you to read a bit of everything. So don't just stick to one. Read lots of different types. That's a really great advice. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I can't wait to listen. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe and listen to our other episodes. Don't forget to check us out on elephantcommunitypress.com, our Facebook, and our Instagram if you're interested in writing and publishing your own stories too.